Aloha, I am June Jones of the Houston Roughnecks, and this is the XFL Show. is cooking welcome football fans this is for the love of football and this is the xfl show i'm alan i'm vince and i'm bryant all the cfl team owners are behind a partnership with the xfl this week and the great one himself took to twitter and proclaimed that the leagues are figuring out an alignment that benefits both players and fans. This is episode 164. It's all about a smart season. What is a smart season? The Rock said we're going for a smart season. We want to put together a smart season. And now we have to figure out exactly what that is, Vince. Welcome back. Yeah, well, it's great to be back. A lot of very interesting, a lot of very intriguing topics here uh, you know, these kind of, you know, different leagues merging, you don't see this kind of stuff very often, but whenever you do, it's a great story. And, and I've just been thinking all week, what is a smart season? <laughs> that, that's what we're trying to figure out today. Bryant, we have Vince back his first time back since the announcement about talking about talking. He hit me up this week, said, I got to get back on the show. It's about time. I'm chomping at the bit. Now we got him. How hyped are you? Well, for you're, this one? you changed the finish on me here. Uh, Alan, he he wasn't supposed to be here. Then now he showed up. I wasn't aware of it. I, I feel almost betrayed, but it's okay. Welcome back, Vince. I appreciate. It. I might call you the Iron Sheik of this episode. We'll see. Either so way, no, it's good to have him back. The, the spoilies Why? for Young Rock for some of the viewers and listeners. Just, no, what we were doing. Get out of here. So that was a little uh, too I, on the I, nose for what happened this week in the best episode yet. My day with Andre, true. Young Rock. Oh man, Very I got episode. one. I got one episode. I'm um, one episode behind, so and, I, and I will get to that tomorrow. I, I promise everybody, I will get to that tomorrow. <laughs> Spoiler free zone here. Seven two four five six five four XFL is the number for you to call or text twenty four seven three sixty five XFL fan line for you to give us your questions, your comments, your thoughts on alignment. What is a smart season? Is the question of the week. What's a smart season to you? We want to hear from you. We'll play your call call on the air if you want. 724-565-4XFL. And, of course, at XFL Show on social media, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you go, we're there at XFL Show talking with you. And, of course, this week the show is brought to you by Pretty Easy Podcasts. You could go to prettyeasypodcast.com to get your own show started right now with your own producer to make you sound great, take a huge production load off your shoulders at a very affordable rate. PrettyEasyPodcasts.com. They also have a catchphrase that I often forget, but Bryant is always here to to back me up like Goldberg in the net. <laughs> well, uh, they make podcasting uh, pretty easy. Vince, they make it so easy that they're actually delayed because I was going to do a Pac-12 basketball podcast, but I was waiting until the season was over. And the season just keeps rolling. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited over. for that to start <laughs> Never gonna be after over. the season's over on Monday, on Tuesday. Well, I know, I know, I know. Gonzaga is not not going to end it. That's not happening because they just don't do that. That's not what. That's not their story ever. But this is not a college basketball podcast. If you want to hear one of those or start one, prettyeasypodcast.com dot com. The place to do it. Dinkin and Duncan. Now, I have a question to start this show off. What? Bryant tweets out. <laughs> depending on how much stock you put on quote unquote game tape. Three hashtag NFL preseason games is a good thing for the hashtag XFL. Who doesn't put stock in game tape? That's what it's all about. What are you saying? <laughs> well, okay. First of all, I'm just saying there's some people out there who think that it's not that important. Getting paid is more important. That's why I put it out there. Uh, what I'm, you know, what I mean though. Like the, obviously, there's going to be less preseason games for the people or the players, excuse me, that play in the XFL. So now that is a good thing for the XFL because if players want game tape. They only get three chances, not four, uh, with the NFL. So now the XFL becomes a better opportunity for them. 
Well, that that does make sense. And thank you for clarifying that for me. I thought you were throwing out there that there are people who don't care about game tape. And good thing Vince is on here to back me up because I think he appreciates game tape almost as much as I do. <laughs> you don't get much better than that. I mean, you know, you could <laughs> – you know, lift, you know, cars and, and, you know, you know, outrun deer or wh- whatever you want. But the game tape is still the most important, absolutely the most important. I love that this time of year, too, we have uh, with the NFL, you know, their their league calendar where it's taken us. And I think I saw I forget where it was. It was maybe I don't I can't even fathom to guess the publication, but it said pretty soon the 40 time will be obsolete. It will not even be matter what at all when we're we're in this time of year in the NFL before the draft or the CFL, and with game tape being ever so important now, and now you have maybe a jumbo sized XFL CFL league. That's where the concern lies. No more forty time concern ever. I I I don't see that ever happening. Alan has been anti forty ever since I beat him in high school. It's fine. Well, you beat me in forty. Oh You've my never, god! Yes, I did. I I you never beat me in the miles. See, I go for distance. I know I definitely beat you in the mile. That's for sure. Uh, well, duck walk uh, uh, works better in the mile, I guess. A little a little uh, more Dinkin and Duncan here. This is some uh, cool news. We saw. This is like seeing um, now with the former XFL players. It's like seeing a, a very rare, beautiful animal in the wild. We saw Luis Perez at two pro days, Western Michigan's show. and Louisville's, uh, the former XFL quarterback for the Wildcats and the Guardians out there still still on his grind trying to f- land somewhere, and I'm sure as hell he will because he's he's too sound of a QB, too good of a leader, too smart of a dude. To not and too right in the smack dab in the middle. I think of his pro prime, whatever that may be. It's such a what a crazy career Luis Perez has that and where it takes him. But we're all the beauty about this is journeyman Vince. There's been guys like him before, but because the day and age we're in, we get to actually see. Oh, this guy's still active at a pro day, whereas maybe 10, 15 years ago, they're saying whatever happened to Luis Perez. We don't get. We don't have to say that anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw this headline. I, w- I was, you know, very surprised by this. Yeah, I don't. I'm kind of surprised. You know, what? Why colleges would have him there? I, uh, I'll wouldn't tell you, you want to be showcasing your own players? Yeah, but also that's how I think that speaks to how how great of a dude Luis Perez is. How much goodwill across football he has as one of the most likable guys that. Colleges are allowing him to showcase himself at their pro day. Also, uh, I, I think this is probably happening with a lot of players who who are looking to get tape out there or get eyeballs on them because of the pandemic, too. So th- that's cool or, of the universities to do that as well. Did, did he owe like a coach a favor? Like was was he brought in as a carpenter to what help? If it's the put other way around. At well I, over or something other, like that. What? Yeah. What yeah. What if somebody owed around? him a favor and Luis is like, hey, let me throw at some of your players there on your pro days. Well, it's just I, I'm very surprised by this because I mean, has he been working out? Hey, with these a superstar teams? can I mean, come out of anywhere, anywhere. So you never know. You bring him <laughs> no, in. No, I'm, I'm not saying I, this isn't anything against him. I just if I'm a college coach. And, you know, you know, I got my, you know, these pro days, there's no combine this year, no combine. And you're supposed to be trying to put over your players on this pro day. You would think specifically with a quarterback position, you would want your quarterback and maybe you don't have one that that's that's going to be going pro. And that's OK. But you would think that, you know, the receivers, you'd want them working with the guy that's been throwing them passes all season and then all of a sudden, you're catching passes from Luis Perez. I mean, what what kind of chemistry could you possibly have with him? Uh, did you I, see I, the chemistry they had? Very strange. He, if I he could, went to New, I, I didn't he went see to New York. Any, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he went to New York and turned them around like that. This he man went, is playing the biggest what market. Does. What what? You tell me if you're going to get a quarterback that played in L.A. and in New York in the same season to throw to your guys. I'm bringing them in and learned how and to play Birmingham. football on Utah on on YouTube. And could take you out and bowl your ass off uh, the next that night as well. Come on, Luis Perez. Also, is, 
Oh, I just I also, it's, 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 uh, Vin Man, how much stock do you put in this throw, by the way, that everyone seems to be showcasing now where they're like going against the and then throw it across, like not across your body, but it's just this like 40 yard that would never happen in a game. Well, Vince really knows. Ever. No, it, it used to all intramural football. University of Pittsburgh. Vince <laughs> knows I was I was throw, <laughs> throwing that pass way before it was cool. Yeah. I, and, you know, and people have been throwing that pass in Madden. You know, all for, for decades, probably, and and blitz. I I, I should say, um, it, I, I mean, people are always going to try to impress people, but let, let's see somebody be able to do that in a game. You, you know, if you tried that in a game and you didn't do it, you're you're probably getting your well, ass. There was only one quarterback at those <laughs> pro days that has played professional football. I'll leave it at that. I I would rather if I'm a Louisville receiver too. If if it's between Malik Cunningham and Luis Perez. On pro day, I'm I'm saying, let coach can Luis throw me some <laughs> some passes? We were did, too hot uh, after a few weeks into the season last year. Did Cunningham ever uh, recover from that big hit from uh, uh, Rashad Weaver or Patrick Jones, yeah, whoever, whoever laid him out? Yeah, I think, and he'll be back. He's only a, he's like a junior, right? He's a good player. He's young. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he's a good athlete. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm excited to see what uh, uh, Coach Satterfield could do. Uh, with them this coming season. I know uh, Brian is very excited for this next YouTube comment that I, I cherry-picked for this week, Dinkin' and Duncan. Uh, Wayne Jones on YouTube. Uh, uh, very well-crafted, well-thought-out, honest opinion on our conversation last week about CFL-XFL alignment. Here it is, and I quote, The CFL might be like Ruffle Chips. But the tried and true brand has been alive and active for over 100 years. The XFL is more of a fantasy bag of chips. Not an actual bag, but more like a picture of chips or maybe an empty bag of chips. It has no proven product at all. It's all show and no product. In reality, the XFL is looking to co-opt with an active league, CFL, with the know-how. Thus, the XFL won't start until 2022 now. The XFL is a little more than a logo and a pipe dream. You guys have bought into the speculative pipe dream and seem to be enjoying it. But it is not a real product. You cannot sell an empty bag of chips. I hope the XFL can become something. But there is no evidence, spelt with an S, so you know he's Canadian. It can survive for more than a single season. If at all, the XFL owners know it. Many would suggest the XFL need a CFL to run an active football league. End quote. (laughs) Can we put this a little in context? Hold on. Before we go into this whole thing, Alan last week said that the CFL was like, I'm sorry, the XFL was like 3D Doritos. It's the hype. It isn't there. Is it going to last? Who knows? But it's just a new, different. Exactly. is what it is. And CFL was... I guess ruffles or something more tried and true, as he says. Well, let's talk about how you know just outdated and uninformed this this whole paragraph is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, a couple. I mean, maybe a couple years ago this would have been true, but people are buying pictures of bags of chips right now yeah. for you know thousands, if not millions. Mr. Jones of dollars. has never heard I mean, of NFTs. Vince, you're right. I, I mean, <laughs> or Bitcoin so or I, I, you know, yeah. So I mean, you know, I'll buy me a picture of a bag of chips <laughs> every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Also, I would counter argue that uh, the XFL is a product now because of the five weeks of innovative football we saw, innovative broadcasting we saw. That I'm sure the CFL's chomping at the bit to be a part of, and also. Uh, you know, we the X, the XFL has crowned a champion in the past. That there is actual meat on that bone. There's a we always say respect the history, respect where you come from. Never forget 2001. So Wayne Jones, I understand where you come from, especially from a CFL angle, and we appreciate you for sure for watching the show, for interacting with us. I love it, and we'll see where it all heads. Hopefully, it just goes into. Maybe it is. It is a, a mutually beneficial. Sure, the XFL is getting with the CFL because there is something the CFL has the XFL needs or wants and the other way around. That's what partnerships are all about.
this could be a remember like back in the day when you know after hockey practice you'd go and somebody hand you your little Capri Sun and then you'd pick one of the fifteen different bags of chips in that box you get from Smart and Final or Costco. Let's be that box. I don't know about that analogy. My chip analogy the different last chips. week was a lot better. The, the, no, but the yes. different chip. I'm using the different chips in the same box. You lost Hockey me at practice. Smart and Finer. <laughs> Uh, but let, let's let's move on. Vince is here. We, we can't waste any more of his time, Bryant. Vince, if you will oblige, we have some things to get into with this week's cover, too, if you're ready. Yep, let's do it. you got to be kidding me. Okay, so in uh, the category of we all saw this coming, uh, Dennis Dodd of CBS is reporting that Oliver Luck is among the Pac-12 commissioner candidates to replace former commissioner Larry Scott. This is great to hear if you're a Pac-12 fan like Brian is rocking his Final Four UCLA hat. Uh, A couple of the other names include Clemson AD Dan Radakovich and Ohio State AD Gene Smith. Vince, can you think of anybody better for the job than Oliver Luck? As a a commissioner for the Pac-12? I would say that this is a very, very good uh, hire if this uh, if this comes to pass, uh, specifically because we're talking about Oliver Luck, who was a who was an athletic director at Stanford, so he he's got some lay of the land out there. He was the uh, chairman of the college football playoff committee, and. The Pac-12 has had much difficulty making that college football playoff. And you got to think that if there is some sort of, you know, tie or controversy or or decision that's got to be made between several teams uh, in order to get in, and one of them is a Pac-12 team, you got to believe that his influence over that college football playoff committee could be what gets them into that discussion. It's all who big you money know. for the conference. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, exactly. That's the first thing that popped in my mind whenever I saw this. The ties. Uh, so I, I, you know, I'm, you know, you could say what you want about the guy, uh, but he's got a lot of pull in college athletics. Uh, at one point, you can maybe say he was the most powerful guy in college athletics. Uh, so. This seems like a good uh, good deal for the Pac-12 if, if this uh, really comes to fruition. Uh, small, just small correction. He was the AD at West Virginia. I bet. I know you want to avoid Vince that, did, but not Stanford. Well, no, no, wanna... he was at. I don't know if he was the AD uh, at Stanford. I think he was just. AD, West I don't know. It could be wrong. AD at WVU. His son went to Stanford. We all know. Kind of went to well, the uh, the only person salivating more than me probably about him possibly being the commissioner of the Pac-12. Is Sam Schwartzstein, right? And that's that's about it. <laughs> it's the only person I can think of that's actually wanting this more than anyone. I, he has ties to the Pac-12. He has, like you said, one of the most powerful men probably in in the NCAA at a given time. Uh, you know, don't forget about his NFL Europe. Bring you know, he he has this tenure of of and, and even the XFL, right? The XFL was a success. So I think very, this would be a great fit. And I'm very excited for the uh, for this possibility. Very also important thing to uh, think about, and yet yeah, also shout out to. Good friend of the show and father of the XFL rulebook, Sam Schwartzstein. Uh, Oliver Luck being in a position like that bodes well, I think, for the XFL in the future uh, with its relationship with the NCAA or in the, and the Pac-12 more specifically. Um, yeah. Because you have a guy in power then who I'm sure still has feelings and a love for the XFL, even though he won't be a part of it moving forward because he did you know, pretty much build – the foundation that this thing is going to be uh, shooting up into the sky like a rocket ship from. And you think about it, you know, I mean, the Pac-12, you know, in addition to, you know, not making the college football playoff uh, very often, you know, it's 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 really a conference that's, that's left behind a lot, even though there's a lot of, it's more of good a power teams out there. Four or three these days. And the there's Pac-12 a lot of good teams of out there. A lot of good ball players, and you know we've seen them try to get innovative with you know broadcasting you know uh, games at noon on the East Coast. Uh, so you got to think, you know, Oliver Luck, you know this guy, you know he was obviously very involved in XFL television broadcasting and putting all that together, and, and which which I think was a success. 
Uh, so it, he he would be a good guy to help move that forward and help get them, you know, uh, back on equal playing field with some of the other conferences. Yeah, I mean, with CBS, you know, not being the head honcho with the SEC anymore, there's possibilities there for the Pac-12, who knows, going forward. The Pac-12 mm. network is a completely utter disaster. It's not on... It's, yeah. it's not on seventy percent of televisions out here on the West Coast. It's 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 a really bad thing. So I think <laughs> even Oliver less can go percentage in there. on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's it's just not something. Uh, it's not an ideal situation. I would say this is more of a June Jones situation, right, where he comes in and it's just half, you know, to the ground, halfway buried, and he's going to try to build it. That's what kind of situation the Pac-12 is in right now. Because uh, in reality, it is. It's it's a it's a big. It's a power three with Clemson, really, right now is what it is. And, and that's Tough. just the reality of the situation with college football is. Tougher job before we move on, Vince. Uh, building the XFL up from nothing uh, with Vince McMahon uh, calling the shots as Oliver Luck or rebuilding the Pac-12 into what it once was. Oh, my God, building the XFL. Tougher. Oh, not even, not even close. So you don't think the Pac-12 is that far mm. behind? No, I think the expectation. No. Well, what about expectations? Though? Hey, that's you got something got to weigh. The Pac-12 expectations that they bring him in are way higher than what Vince McMahon and the XFL. Well, had what you? Think, well, I can't. Oh, oh, Southern Cal's looking really good this year. They got Oliver Luck as the commissioner of the conference. <laughs> <laughs> it's called money. Money. I did learn about units in the in the uh, in the um, in March Madness. You know about units? The more units you get, the better. So it's all it's a pressure. It's a pressure to get money. You know, ever since they got Greg Sankey, you know, the Alabama has been unstoppable. Uh, make make no mistake about it. You know, those television networks were were huge, huge players for. Uh, for conferences, you know, you know, the Big Ten started it, and you know, we millions of dollars being pumped into those schools. But at the same time, it ain't making Rutgers some powerhouse. It ain't making you know, Purdue isn't you know, you know, making a run to the Rose Bowl every year because of uh, because of the Big Ten network money. Uh, it, it's still it's still very hard to win, no doubt about it. But you know getting on equal playing field with, with a, a competent network will certainly help. The West Coast is just a little bit of a dis- – I mean, the, the Rose Bowl didn't even want to play on the West Coast this past year, so let's just be real. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Man, <laughs> West Coast football is in a different state than it was when we were first probably becoming football fans where it was dominant in the throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s. All right, let's move on. Part two of the cover two. The CFL draft is happening. Announced this week by the league, May the 4th. Be with you and the CFL draft, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it will be broadcast. It will be an affair. And it will be a snake draft. They made a few minor adjustments to, to to the draft format in the CFL. And, you know, a lot of us, we are not familiar with the CFL draft. Uh, but that just shows how hard they are working to move forward, have a season this year. They have went to a snake draft. They went from eight rounds to six. And also TSN's Farhan Lalji reporting that executives and staff members of both the teams and the league offices are agreeing to take what is amounting to a $6.5 million collective pay cut. And that's stemming from the 20% pay cut the league is asking the players to take moving into the season uh, if they're not going to have any fans in the stands. So the CFL has a draft plan together. They have a pay cut plan together, at least for the league and the players. Players aren't really reacting too well to that request. But the CFL, again, uh, moving forward as much as they can towards a 2021 season, Bryant. And even with this announcement, still some skepticism out there and – with myself you can have a draft and not have a season we've seen it but this is uh, we good saw it last year are. yeah the cfl had a 2020 draft and they didn't have a season i mean i'm not you know I, I, look <laughs> i'm an xfl fan i'm not bashing on the cfl like i do on the aaf i'll never do that i, I appreciate the cfl i just try to speak truths here i i'm glad that this is a national draft right so this is just for canadian-born players Alan, no, do you know? Amer- american players can be drafted 
Yep, they just also finished, I believe, a CFL Italian combine. And uh, you and I know about all the talent down in Mexico, too, Brian. Oh, which yeah. Which the CFL has their eye on. Vince, if you <laughs> have some time Vince. after the show, please, let's watch some uh, Mexican football, American football league, whatever it was called. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Liga Fútbol Americano Mexicana. Something like that. Uh, either way, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, ex- I mean, I'm going to watch. I, I want to see what the CFL, you know, has to offer in terms of. Here's the things I'll look for because I don't know the players very well, but I will look for presentation. Um, how well the how well the the draft goes. See you know, how the commentators talk about be these things. There. Dis- you're going to be disappointed in terms of the. Uh, Spectacle. And the story, the storytelling. I think it's going to be more straightforward. Great sports reporting, which is what that's what it's all about on TSN, who's going to be broadcasting this thing. But that's where the XFL comes in. When you have a well, future XFL CFL draft, you'll have a little bit more pomp and circumstance. Well, we'll see. The XFL we'll didn't really impress, other than other than the podcasting. I really don't know how the XFL oh, really I showed. That- it's it's so you know during the draft, the XFL draft. He, even though very very few eyeballs were given the chance to view it because it was just kind of thrown it it's still on YouTube in, by the way into a corner on YouTube it was unreal it was it was what basically everybody's doing now before it zoom and mm-hmm. at home draft but unbelievable analysis roundtable conversations and a whole lot of fun and, and great catchphrases I mean I don't I don't know if I would I don't know if I would do a lot of storytelling in this draft. Uh, is, who, who's going to be in this? A well, bunch it, of Italians? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, well, this, this exactly, this also speaks to the Canadian ratio rule, which even I was more and more reading, you know, reading all the articles that came out about uh, the league t- uh, executives taking pay cuts, and then you see reaction to that announcement. Uh, you see, you know, more the the rocks tweet we're going to get into uh, fans react saying the Canadian ratio rule has to go. There just aren't enough good players up here. Sure, there are good players and there, we want Canadians in the league, but that rule handcuffs you. There's a lot of stuff that the CFL has in place that is tradition and meant to preserve the the history of the game and all that, which is great. But at the point they're at, which TSN's Dave Naylor has been reporting uh they maybe can't cling on to that kind of stuff anymore. And this draft, I think, will be a big example of that, Vince. Whenever, if you get any, of, you know, five minutes to watch, you're probably, I don't know, you're, I guarantee you're going to be like, who the hell are these players? Who are? Well, that, well that's kind of my, that's kind of my point. And, and, it, and how much are you really going to be able to talk these guys up? Yeah, I mean, you need some, some major salesman to convince me. That you know that these guys are hashtag. Like, we want know, our jobs back. Like, oh my god, I really need to go. You know, see this player play. Uh, I think that's going to be very difficult. Uh, but I, so I, from from an entertainment before. standpoint, I don't know if <laughs> you know if that's the way to go. But I think breaking down, like you know, you know what the team needs are and how this guy can help and th- that kind of stuff. I think, I'm I think that'll be entertaining. I'm interested in seeing uh, h- how honest players might be. Like you get drafted by the CFL this year. Are you going to be like, am I actually ever going to play in the CFL? Is this going to be around when I go? Well, why why would you enter the draft if you don't want to? <laughs> I don't know if it's you want to. I think it's the complications of whether or not there will be a season, but that's for yeah. a, a topic for another day. I will Alan, I don't know. I, I'm looking, I'm reading online. It says CFL national draft to me. That's only C- Canadian players, so it might be this round. But I don't know. That we'll let our CFLers correct us on that if needed. Um, I, I will say I've said it before on the show, and I think I said it when I said, "Hey, I don't know who's going to play in the XFL in the future," and I'm not worried. The same thing with the CFL, right? Because going into the XFL season last year, we didn't know who Boogie Roberts was. We didn't know so many players, and we got excited. We 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 we. We, we were entertained by players we didn't know going into the draft. So the draft is an important piece for a team to help explain those players. But if they don't showcase them that well, it's fine because we'll learn about them when they actually play on the field. There it is. The Canadian Football League draft, May 4th, 7 p.m. It is actually happening. The season, though, still in question. And does it need to happen in order for a CFL-XFL alignment to happen? 
Let's get into that and all the news of alignment that came out this week. It is time for this week's Hot Read. Reports and quotes from this week on alignment negotiations, starting with the response from The Rock on Twitter that we got when some fans were kind of in a panic over the XFL and CFL season, uh, a potential merger season possibly, just really putting players in a tough situation where they got to play way too much football, the, putting their health in jeopardy. Fans were very concerned, calling out The Rock, and we got a response from the great one. He said, hi, gents. I never said that. We'll figure out a smart season that'll create phenomenal opportunities for players and be the best experience for fans. I played ball for years and wrestled 280 plus nights a year for years and years and years. Every night. So I know the value in smart scheduling and recovery. The Rock, Brian, in response there saying, we're going to figure out a smart season. Pump the brakes everyone relax you know the rock works harder more than anyone i've seen i I follow him on instagram Uh, most of the time he is saying hey my day's winding down i'm just gonna read this 300 page script while i have a bowl of pasta at 1 a.m in the morning like that's that's the rock right there for you so if he knows that he has to step back for the players and and and, and let them take a breather um, i believe him and i we'll get into what we all think a smart season is uh, but I still think The Rock is emphasizing the fact that this is for the players. Yes, it's about making money, but we're not going to make the money at the players' expense. What were these fans saying on Twitter, Brian, that that they were misquoting the great one, too? Like, how dare they? <laughs> Who that's, yeah, that's... is this Rudy Poo? Uh, you got me on the wrong gimmick here, Alan, because usually I'm this. That's the other podcast where I'm the, the, <laughs> the social media the, the social media guy. Uh, throw it to Vince. I'll, I'll get the quote can, that they misspoke about. The exact right now. misquote. Yeah. I, we'll dig that up. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's very important to this story. But I will say this: you know, you know, The Rock. You know, he knows about you know grinding all the time, and he knows about working. You know, 280 plus nights a year and how difficult night that after is. Night. night after night, Vince. But, you know, that may be 280 plus nights worth of work, but that's also 280 plus nights worth of money that I, I'm sure The Rock enjoyed. And, you know, sometimes you got to get out there and, you, and start making towns if you want to if you want to make money. And, you know, maybe that's what's going to have to happen here. Uh, You know, and I understand that that, you know, how long should the season be? Uh, You know, I don't know, uh, Alan, how long is a a CFL season? How many games? We got 18. In 21 weeks. 18 games. In 21 weeks with the playoffs. No, 21 weeks. Total. No, 21 weeks for 18 games, then the playoffs. Well, that's what I'm talking about. All right. So somewhere between 18 and 21 weeks. They play twenty one uh, weeks <laughs> to that. Yes, that's a long season. No, no doubt about that. You're, I'm, I'm, you're not going to hear me arguing about it. Um, <clears throat> but is there really any talk of adding more games on top of that? No, I mean, I guess, I mean that's, that's why these the, whoever tweeted at the Rock here obviously doesn't yeah. listen to this show because we've been coming on here the last month now or so since the announcement. There's nothing in concrete being thrown out by the leagues that we can sink our teeth into and criticize yet. There's there's nothing. You're just getting mad over speculation and that and putting words in people's mouths when you shouldn't. And of course, that's going to happen when someone when leagues make big announcements like this. But again, reminding everybody watching and listening to the show this week again, there's nothing official announced in terms of what the season would look like with the new alignment what alignment even means if it's a merger so don't get mad at nothing just yet it's, calm down okay. yeah it's 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 not like you know the players are going to go play a 10 game xfl season and then two weeks later go play an 18 game 
uh, CFL season. I'd be very surprised well, if they, okay, something so, like that happened. So this all reaction to this? I sent you. This so I just sent you all. Yes, that's exactly what it was. So I'm sending it. I just sent it to you. I'm putting it up on the actual feed now, so we all have it to, to review. But basically, what it was is the XFL of somebody in the CFL brought up this uh, graphic. Uh, sorry, I'm having a little difficulty over here. But basically, it was, hey, let's do a 10 game season for the XFL. Let's do XFL CFL, then a combined playoffs. And then on top of that, let's do, uh, oh yeah, a regular CFL season for eight more games, I believe is what it is. That's what came up. Um, I I personally don't like this at all. I don't know if you guys are seeing that now in front of you. Um, and there it is actually up on the podcast now, so our fans can see. But basically... What don't I, you like about it? I, look, I'm a scheduling freak. You guys know this. You cannot play a 10-game season with 18 teams and have any competitive balance whatsoever. Like how, how do you how do you have a, a schedule that makes sense with that type of schedule with only ten games between two with eighteen teams basically seventeen teams? It's a lot of oh, teams in fewer games, but I mean, do you, how you got a lot? How many teams you got in like those European leagues that are playing like multiple seasons at once, Vince? Those are those are all like fifteen plus teams in, but they're playing like twenty to forty games in a season, aren't they? Some of these cup oh, tournaments too. Yeah, well, yeah. How how many teams are in the in the, the Premiership? You yeah, know, they're playing. I would think they're playing this, a full home this, and home round robin plus this everything graphic, else. This graphic's more of like a tournament proposition to me. Yeah, I don't know what. The, I'm not quite sure what this is. Well, um, somebody at somebody at um, I think it was Jim Mullen of TSN brought this graphic up just as a point of discussion. That's what started this whole thing. Um, and then somebody mm-hmm. said one of the more interesting nuggets from what The Rock said when buying the assets of the XFL was that he wanted games at various times of the year. This is a possible path that fits the narrative. Thoughts? Never. Uh, somebody said. responded to this would be terrible for players and player safety without adequate offseason to train. <laughs> We'd see more injuries. Players would never fully recover and it prevents players from getting second jobs which most need that's from josh rush 32 on twitter and that's what the rock responded to when he said hi gents i never said that so the rock pretty laying it out he's saying yeah that would be ridiculous to play Play forever (laughs) all year long i'm I'm for it maybe they heard that on this show i feel like i might have said that at like jokingly maybe that someone heard me say that you think the Rock's getting not misquoted gonna, because of me? If so, I apologize. Oh, great one. They're not gonna. They're not gonna do this. I mean, look at look at this. I mean, <laughs> they are not gonna. They are not gonna play. You know. Uh, you know. Starting training camp in March and then ending in November. I mean, that that's craziness. It's like baseball. And, and, you, and it's what, longer what you, than baseball. What are, you, and what are you gonna do? You know, say you're actually good. And some NFL team comes, you know, asking for you. What are they going to do? You, you pull you off the team in, in middle of July and say, hey, well, that's a current CFL situation. That's a current CFL uh, situation. If a player is good, when does the season end, Alan? End of September? Right? Somewhere around that the range? CFL, November. Yeah. So if that's the current format for a that, CFL, that, if a that, player, if a team wants pro- you. That's a problem. Don't you think that's a problem? I mean, well, why would you? The CFL you has lasted playing? for 60 plus years. Uh, with this formula, uh, Vidman. So I think there, it's pretty clear that I'm just being sarcastic. Of course, two, it's a problem. Players want more money, so they well, want to play. Uh, that have to just, the time, the just the timing of it. I What's, mean, I would. You know, what? How, I, I don't know. What the is problem this? is, it's still negative thirty in Regina right now. Like there's oh, snowstorms. Yeah, was, you know, playing, it's ridiculous. You can't play football right now. It's impossible. Regina in, in March would be pretty rough. Uh, Second part here, I want to I want to get into before we start talking what an actual smart season is. Is uh, good good close personal longtime dear friend of the show, Dave Naylor of TSN, is doubling down on a lot of his reporting, which I love, and it makes me confident that when we had him on the show, he's sticking to pretty much everything he told us. Brian, he said, "I have found no, I have not found anybody high up in a team." who thinks this is a terrible idea. That's probably good for the league that there's not a divided nature on this one. That's talking about ownership, executives within the CFL, on the team level, 
everybody's on board with the XFL negotiations and where they want to go with them, and they want to do something with them. And Naylor went on to say, I'm talking about integration of this league and that league. There's a very broad support for this idea, at least the full exploration of this idea. Good news there, too, for this week. For who? Good news for who? For the CFL as being a cohesive unit, and for the XFL, if you really do want the CFL to be serious about these negotiations. Well, I think uh, the best line, I think, is we're not talking about talking, we're talking about doing. And I think it's very uh, straightforward and very real. And, And we, on the XFL side, have seen this and hoped that that's what this was, that they're talking about doing something. Um... And I think, like we've seen on, on Twitter and, and from a lot of fans, they don't want to see uh, them talking about doing. So, Naylor is, is right where I think he also mentioned the fact that the – yes, there's a lot of risk. There's never been a spring league, really, that's lasted over, what, four years maybe? something. Like, how long was the USFL around for? Three years? There's no – Three? Yeah, there's no, two, there's no risk. There's a lot of risk in getting involved with the spring league. Uh, but there's probably more risk uh, staying with the status quo. Well, I hope I, the more I think about this, the really I, I I hope that it's not a spring league. I want to see a late spring, early summer league. Uh, What's whoa? Hold your horses, then, Vince. Let me set you up. Let me set you up for your thought. Because with the a with the apple with the assist, you you, you got you you know. Know the moves being made by the CFL right now, we've talked about now, to really make this season happen, to move forward, at least with 2021. It's very important for their health and well-being. And you know the support now that we're hearing that the league is has from everybody who's in charge of all the teams and at the league office for these negotiations with the XFL and alignments. And now you know that The Rock is going to lay the smack down on skeptics and people who are misquoting as these negotiations go on, the seriousness of both leagues going into this, when it comes down to alignment, what what does it mean when we say we're going to have a smart season? What is a smart season now with all that laid out in front of you? I think a smart seat. I mean, picking the time a year is smart. So you're saying late picking, spring, early summer? I, I would start it no earlier than the middle of April, no earlier than that. The and start of the season I, or training camp? I'm sorry, I just want to clear. Start that. of the season, season. start okay. of the games, no earlier than the middle of April. And picking the number of games is obviously smart. I think that's going to definitely be dictated by the number of teams that you have, uh, which I guess is kind of undetermined. You know, is it you know is it going to be you know. You know, eight XFL teams and and however many CFL teams there are, 10, nine. 12, I don't nine. Is it, is it going to be a combination of the two? Are there going to be merging of some teams? We don't we don't know. Um, but you, you know, I would kind of say that you know you got you got to find that right balance of number of games that you're going to play with the number of teams that you have. Uh, you know, you should play probably every team once and maybe a, a few teams twice if you're if you're in a division I wouldn't I wouldn't go a lot more uh, than that and then I would have some sort of playoff that's not uh, maybe at the beginning you know maybe half the teams involved in the, in the playoff I would do something like that um, and, and go from there and you know you know in terms of being a smart season maybe that means you know a couple bye weeks you know, keep some teams fresh and, you know, for injuries and things like that. Uh, that To me, that's what it would, I think, a smart season uh, would be. So so let me hit you with some with some smartness on this season here, Vin Man, because I like what you're thinking, but I'm going to tell you why it's not possible. If you're talking middle of April to, let's yeah. say, middle of August, because you want to get done before oh, college football yeah. gets going oh, and before the regular start, season, right? I would stop it. The season I would have the season end in July. Okay, so if you're doing July, it's really not possible because you're talking about maybe if you're lucky, 16 weeks of play 16. from the middle of April 
to the end of July. So if you do that, I think that's plenty. It's plenty. You're right, but you're not going to be able to play every team once and a couple of other teams twice. Well, that's you're not going to you're going to have fine. to hold on. That's fine. I've already looked at I got the calendar in front of me. <laughs> Elephant brain. Right here, Alan. Don't worry. I got your back, bro. Um, all right, there you go. Same bro again. Uh, anyway. We say fella so, around here. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Yims. Um, you have to <laughs> condense, 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 <laughs> condense with an S, uh, your season. Uh, because. Yeah, that's fine. You, you, you're not going to be able to play every other team, which I'm totally fine with. Okay. I don't think you have to. Okay. The NFL doesn't, right? Even with 17 weeks, they don't play every single team. Well, so, a couple yeah, teams I said, twice I said at most. Yeah. At most. So. If you can play a 13 to 14 week season, 14 weeks, maybe 15, you have to, you're going to have to start probably beginning-ish of April, maybe the second week of April. I don't think you can push to the third or fourth week of April. Uh, how the weather is in Canada, I don't know. How the NHL is going to work, battling, trying to get against that. Now, here's the thing. Our, I saw a lot of people saying in Canada, do you want to go up against Stanley Cup hockey? Well, are you going up against Stanley Cup hockey? Because your revenue is no longer going to be based on ticket sales. It's going to be on eyeballs. And I guarantee you, you're going to get a lot of eyeballs here in the U.S. for those football games. Well, I think there. I think ticket revenue, you know, may be not a huge piece of the pie. What is now? But, okay. That's right. the CFL but, business model, which so, we need to get away with, from, which is a lot of why this is actually happening. Uh, yeah, you know, my my point is, you know, maybe ticket revenue is not, you know, a huge piece of the pie, but filling the stadium, I and creating an atmosphere that people are excited about, I think is very important. I don't know, man. So, You're watching these baseball games with twenty thousand people. These basketball games. I'm not with five. watching these baseball games. Well, you don't watch baseball. <laughs> Do you watch baseball? I don't even know if you watch baseball. Football games with ten thousand. I mean, the Super Bowl seemed fun. There was fifteen thousand people. Di- there that's scattered. a different situation. Yeah. That is a completely different <laughs> situation. That would not be under normal sa- circumstances. You, you know, if it's you different. want, you can't. There are certain things in this country that you are just not going to compete with. You know, you are not going to compete for television time in the month of March. You are not going to beat March Madness. Whatever you try to do, you will not beat that. So, do not have games during the month month of March. You want you want to draw people to a game. You do it whenever there's some nicer weather. That's why I'm saying start in April. You know, so you could April, May, June, some nice months nice weather months you could get people to come to the game it you cannot do this at times where you got to compete with too much extra stuff i just don't understand why it has to be competing why why do i have to compete with march madness i'm trying to hit a goal if i hit that goal i don't care what march madness is doing i'm trying to make a million views on my on my on my on my game and if and if I'm on CBS you even get, or if I'm on TBS or if I can get a commercial going and I can get a thousand a million people to watch my t- my football game, I don't care what March Madness does. That's what I care about the eyeballs. Can't, well, no, isn't or, it, but you're not going to get those. Is my point? Isn't it There's possible be people watching these games. to have an awesome like? I don't. I don't. Not even doing math because I'm not going to bother. But can you have like an awesome twelve week season starting early April that ends, which would be freaking amazing on like the 4th of July Hell or yeah. around there would be yeah. the coolest with thing playoffs ever. or with playoffs have the championship game the mm. week of the 4th of July I don't know if Canadians let me, would let, like that but that would be let pretty me, cool. let me calc that out so that's about four you got another that's nine that gives you about 13 gives you about 14 weeks total in that span which is more than what the XFL was putting together in 2020 and gives you, I think, time to you could have a preseason or two in 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 March, uh, which is not about TV dollars or anything. It's about your league year and getting players ready. And the good thing about starting in April too, I think, is with you're going to be taking American college football players, and that I think gives them plenty of time to get drafted and acclimated and part of a team too. You know, I mean, they're going to have to do it right out of college. They're going to be waiting in. And you're co- you're coinciding with the NFL draft too, though, so that's also something you have to think about. How many players do you miss out on moving forward that are going to wait to get drafted in the NFL that you're already going to have, 
your season is starting before an yeah, NFL draft. You, you, you make an you make an argument to even start it in May. Uh, you could you could make that. Or, however, though, well, then, you know you well, got to think. What in June we have? How many the U.S. Open and then baseballs? How many? <laughs> oh, oh, like, come uh, on! There's got to be. You can't. How have many? This. Well, well, well that, that's a good point, Alan. Yeah, how many kids are realistically, you know, you know, not going to get, you have a lot of kids that aren't going to get picked, but they're going to still be signed as undrafted free agents. You know, you're going to try that first year to make the NFL. You know, it seems like, you know, in, in, in an XFL and a CFL, you're going to be picking up more kids that were, you know, one year removed from trying i'm not saying everybody was like that but it seems like the the bulk of your kids are going to be those guys yeah you're now, gonna have now what a, do you think a the- lot a lot less if any Ke- uh, kenny robinson's right from the battle hawks right brian right that, that won't be happening if you do play if you do start around that time what do you think the rock meant by smart season i don't mean dates i don't mean things like that but what do you think he cares about the most when it comes to a smart season is it the player's health making sure they're not playing 27 weeks out of the year or or whatever it is that people want them to do is is that what the rock was hinting yeah towards? or is he hinting he was, more towards time frame of the year i don't even think he was getting that specific this was him shutting down false narratives yeah. i think about the, the xfl cfl look at it just have players playing nonstop all all year long, which is my dream. I think American football should be going on the way uh, Europe, or I guess world football goes on all the time, nonstop in some form or fashion. But I can only dream. That's not what the, this is about. This is about an alignment, which is what we've been talking about, an alignment of leagues where a time frame for a season is put together – where a certain amount of teams are put together and and they move and they proceed forward. This was the Rock really shooting down a falsehood. This this is I we have no information other than it doesn't make any sense. But why wow. would they have a full of a half of a, a CFL season be the full XFL season? Would be just ludicrous, and I don't know how that benefits anybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is The Rock just throwing out a buzzword to shut people up is pretty much what this is. It's a good one, and it's made for a good topic yeah, because yeah. it got us thinking about when Smart the season. season will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Smart season to me is avoiding March Madness. I'm with you there, Vince. I mean, that is really, do- t- in terms of television, there's nothing going on other than people wait And then opening day, ooh. You will be colliding with that if you and, start an early year. And, but. and, you know, as much as I don't give, you know, one hoot about, about this, uh, the Masters, uh, the, you know, the week and That's, after the Final Four still yeah. draws a lot of interest from people for some reason. I don't know if they need, if they have but need help falling asleep forget, or what. But. Let's not forget, legislation in Canada is really ramping up for single game betting, too. That's going to play a huge factor in the future of the amount of eyeballs that are on the CFL or sure. an XFL uh, weekend. So the, t- the, the competition in terms of television really doesn't matter. What matters is what I brought up, I think, players and who you're going to make yourself available to. You'll be missing out on a lot of Kenny Robinson's, Brian, if... You I start in early April or March. There is but, no, there is a surplus of players. I'm not going to move my entire schedule to get a couple of picks that didn't get drafted in the NFL draft. There is a know, surplus of players. There is Relax. something to be said about uh, um, like an early May, second week of May start where you can have like an influx of last minute additions to teams would be really exciting. The trickle down. You loved that last draft. time. I don't know. I would love that. Uh, I don't know. It, it, I just feel like the summer is a good spot it, it, for the XFL and the CFL. I think they could be the hottest thing in the summer, hotter than than Gloria was way back in the day. Right, Alan? Absolutely. I got screwed up. I just got screwed up. Yeah, I think you should Did do Kenny something. Did Kenny Robinson original. end up getting picked? Fourth Carolina. round? Fifth round? Carolina. Carolina. I think he made the yeah. practice squad, though. Yeah. Weren't, weren't, weren't 
people telling me that he was going to be some first round. Well, pick if he got twelve on, games on that... like he was probably going to, he probably would have got drafted in the third round, <laughs> second round. You know, uh, he was, but Alan, you know, yeah, COVID, he, COVID, you know, COVID. <laughs> um, all right, so let us know what a smart season is to you, gentle XFL CFL fan. If an alignment happens, what's a smart season to you? Talking it out here, I think a smart season definitely starts April or later. And the more I talk about it now to myself, May, because more players, <laughs> yeah. Vince, is what I'm all about. More more NCAA talent coming into this league is what we need. I think that's what Canadian football fans also are craving uh, because the CFL ratio, I think, will go with this alignment. And that'll be meaning they need to really ramp up the scouting and signing of players from the NCAAs. Yeah, maybe I, I we we still don't even know what what they're talking about. Exactly, they're talking about they are talking about doing, and that's exactly. what we talk about here every single Friday. So make sure you catch us every single Friday here on your favorite podcast platform: Google Podcasts, Apple, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you give us that five star review and tell your friends about us. If you have a question, comment, or concern, or topic you want us to cover, well, then text or call the XFL fan line, 724-565-4XFL. Standard text messaging and international rates do apply. Don't forget about those international rates. Ben, man, you're in you're in the U.S., right? Yeah, you're in Pittsburgh. Uh, also, if, follow us on CFL Twitter. CFL people, though. <laughs> That's true. At XFL <laughs> Show on all social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, uh, if you want to say hi to me, Alan, and sometimes Vince, uh, then subscribe to us on YouTube. That is youtube.com slash this is the XFL Show, the official YouTube page of This is the XFL Show. And, oh, and don't forget about our sponsors, Pretty Easy Podcast. Go to prettyeasypodcast.com. Get started today because they make podcasting uh, pretty easy. <laughs> Great show back, Vince. Had had a jam up time. Let me say you're a jam up guy, and you know I know you're talking a lot about some CFL uh, players and and personnel, and you don't know them personally. But I think you're going to learn a lot more as the weeks go on, and I'm happy that you're yeah, back for yeah, some of these uh, conversations. I'm, yeah, I haven't really uh, paid too much attention to the CFL uh, whenever Doug Flutie hasn't been playing, but. I will have to start doing that, uh, particularly this year and 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 beyond. Who knows uh, what's going to happen? It, it may be the XCFL by the time it's all said and done. One one day in the future, when I'm running or or working for some big company, I'm just going to tell a story what? about this day, <laughs> my day with Vince. <laughs> You didn't go to see E. T. Okay. though. It's another <laughs> young it's another young rock reference, Vince. You'll you'll get it in like a day or two when you twenty four hours, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, you're spoiling a lot of stuff. <laughs> no, that was that's the name right. of the, the, the title of the episode. That's the title is of the episode. My episode. day with Andre. So this is my day with Vince. It was a good day. We learned a lot. Well, that if, day. if well, if we're gonna, you know, if it was really your day with me, we would be drinking lots of wine and Same playing thing. cards, and you'd be calling me boss. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jeez. why we love him what when he's this? on the show. Hopefully, it happens more often. Hopefully, do you want this show to age well, Bryant? Where are we at with that? Uh, you know, Vince. I, so, Vince, I've been saying that I don't want these shows to age well because I want some big news to come out right away like if this show comes out friday morning friday afternoon i want some big news or monday morning i don't know i kind of want this one to age a little bit because we talked about a smart season it's is that like a season that like could connect to your alexa or your 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 speaker devices because that would be pretty cool too alexa when will the cfl and xfl season alignment uh start Oh, yeah, it's called echo your in your it's I called call. echo in your office yeah, it's okay I call it echo because they <laughs> conflict you got to change name i've totally blood i i messed that up. i got screwed up i just got screwed up all Vince, right it was good having you back brother i mean it's 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 a tremendous time i'm having most fun with this show you know how good i am at talking about talking about a season that's about to start but we don't even <laughs> yeah. know when it's going to start uh this is the most fun i've had or since probably is. 2018 so 
<laughs> Come on more, man. I'm telling you. I've been hyped. Also, the Quack Attack is back. If you haven't checked that out, check that out. That's a lot of fun. Oh, that Mighty Duck show. We're not we're we're not affiliated no, with not at all. Disney at all. No. At all. No, no Disney. Just a fan. A J- we're fans. We, That's were, what we are. We were adjacent because the XFL when we were with the league and on ABC and ESPN. Hashtag we want our jobs back, but maybe in the future. Maybe maybe these games will be on Disney Plus. Who knows? Probably not. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it can happen. Well, I will say that if they could do some sort of in- integration uh, with the Disney Plus products, uh, that would be very good. You know, could you imagine, you know, Kermit and Sam Eagle calling a, a game? Oh, that would that be, be really good. With with Fozzie sideline reporting. Think about I, how many I, fans you could get if Maui the demigod was calling football games for the XFL. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, we'll leave you with that, everybody. We'll be back next week. Thanks again for watching on our, on the YouTube channel. Thanks for subscribing on whatever podcast platform you're on. And thanks to Vince for joining us once again. We can't wait to have him back uh, very, very soon. Maybe next week. Maybe the week <laughs> after. Who knows? He comes and goes as he pleases, but he's allowed to because he's the boss. All right. For Vince, for Bryant, I'm Alan. This is the XFL Show. Remember... They're listening.